the principle of BSDF allows you to create physically based shaders that react in a realistic way based off of physics. It's really good for realistic materials as well as stylized materials as it's based off of Disney's design. So we'll skip the first two settings here because they all only make sense once you know about the other settings. So the base color is just the regular color without any lighting. So this is what the color would be if it was completely unlit. Next we got our subsurface options. Subsurfaces for materials that light can go inside and bounce around and then come out somewhere else, which technically is every material except for metal. But many materials might not have that, that noticeable if they aren't very thin. So this is good for things like leaves or for like light coming through thin parts of skin like your ears. And then like certain other materials like candle wax. So as I enable it, you can see that it turns white. And that's because the subsurface color is basically the same thing as the base color, but for subsurface materials. So if I want it to be the same, I can just click this little eyedropper and click that. Now, if I went to my rendered view with scene lights and stuff on, you can see that there's a little bit of something going on here where there's some light going through. Now with Eevee, you're going to want to go ahead and select the material and then down there's settings, subsurface translucency, and that's going to make it so that the light can actually go through the back. So if I had like a really thin material, you can see that the light goes through and you can see it coming out of the back, which would be good for if I had like a leaf. Now you don't have to enable this in cycles as it's not even shown. With cycles, because of its ray tracing, you have to make sure that the mesh actually has thickness for it to be able to go through, as you can see. Well, if I looked in Eevee, it just kind of acts like it's a very thin piece. Next, we got the subsurface radius. Now this acts as both like how far the light can go as, and since it's split up into X, Y, Z for R, G, B, red, green, and blue, it says this is how far red light can go, this is how far blue light can go, and this is how far green light can go. So as you can see, it's more red, and that's based off of what it would be like for skin. Well, if we said that this was like a leaf because it's green, we could add some green, maybe turn on the red a little bit and have it be like a yellow green. Then it would be kind of more like a leaf would be. And then you could turn on the subsurface amount. And then of course you have to make sure that the color would be the same. If you do that, it acts as a mix amount and as a multiplier of the subsurface radius for subsurface materials. This Chris Denson Burley option is here, which can be either that or a random walk. Now, random walk doesn't work in Eevee, only in cycles. So if I turned on cycles, you can see. Now, random walk is a bit better for really thin materials. If I did it, switch between them here with this one that's not really thin at all, there's not really much difference, but if you shrunk it down, You can see there's a bit of a difference where this is much more yellow and this one's coming out as much more green. So run and walk should be more realistic. Now it does have some problems, however. Run and walk has issues where there's areas where it's not like sealed or there's overlapping, like in the Suzanne's eyes, you can see that it's kind of ending up with this like bluish area that's kind of weird here when you're using random walk. If I change it to Christensen Bailey, it looks more like you would probably expect in this area. And that's because, as you can see with the eye, there's a little bit of it overlapping and it's not sealed. There's a hole there. 
which random walk has issues with. Random walk is also slower, but if you don't have the issues with the holes or overlapping parts, it looks better usually. Next up, we got our metallic option. If I turn this on, it looks like metal, which means that it has fully specular reflections and no diffuse. Now, normally you wouldn't have a material that's kind of in between. It's usually either zero or one, except for if you got like a texture where there might be a little bit of anti-aliasing going around the edges of areas that are metal or not metal. But generally you either have this as zero or one. Next we got specular, which changes how strong the specular highlights show. Now, most people just leave that at 0.5 since most materials are pretty close to that. And then you can like save a texture if you're making textures. But technically speaking, if you want perfectly realistic results, I think that some materials have a little bit of a difference. So you can find that online. Specular tint changes the color of the specular to match the base color. So if I pull it up, it becomes tinted red here. Now if I had like a black, it doesn't do it because it's just the hue. Roughness is how rough or smooth the material is. If it's rougher, it's going to have more blurry highlights, while if it's smoother, it's going to have much more sharp highlights. And you can see when you have an HDRI in the background, you can see the reflections of the trees and stuff. Next, we have anisotropic, which is cycles only. If we turn this on, we can see that it elongates the specular highlights. This is good for materials where there's small surface bumps that are elongated in one direction, such as like brushed metal with its long brush-like marks or for like hair where each strand acts as a long surface bump. For hair particle systems where you have like each hair actually modeled out and you like go ahead and groom it and stuff. You're just gonna kind of get the, that by default because you have all the hair's strands actually modeled out. So that effect could be used more for like hair cards on a video game character or like an anime character where you'd have the hair as a big chunky model instead of each strand. Now the anisotropic rotation just rotates the reflection. Pretty straightforward. Sheen gives like a little highlight around the edges. It kind of creates an effect similar to cloth where you have like a little bit of fuzz that's picking up light. So this is good for cloth materials. And then the sheen tint decides how much to tint it as the base color, similar to the specular tint. If you turn it completely off, it's going to be white. If you turn it on, it's going to be more red matching the red in the base color. Clear coat adds like another layer of specular which is good for things like car paint or like a guitar's finish so as you can see if we have like you can have like a rough reflections on the bottom and then a much smoother one with a clear coat roughness on the top and this can be good for things like car paint now i think that car paint has like non-metallic paint with like metallic Specs, so we'd probably have something that would average out to somewhere in between. So that looks kind of like car paint. Transmission gives you like a glass-like effect. And the IOR decides like how the light is reflected into it, which is the index of reflection. And you can look this up for different materials online. If you tweak it, it changes how the light is refracted in it. And the transmission roughness decides how rough the transmission is. Now, it doesn't seem to really have any effect on EV, so you'd have to go into cycles to see the difference. Now, emission is like a color that I can emit as light. So if I turn off this emission strength, and it starts glowing. I can turn on bloom, and that gives like a glowy effect by blurring the areas that are over 100% brightness. And if I added a plane here, in Eevee it doesn't 
light it up, but if I went into cycles, it would light it up. So if I change this to even higher, it gets even brighter. So the light that's emitted here actually affects other objects in cycles. I forgot to mention GGX versus multi-scatter GGX, which determine how the light is distributed on the mesh. So if I switch between these two and I wait for it to compile, you'll see that kind of by default, there's not really a difference. Basically, multi-scatter GGX is where when the light hits the material and it's a rough material, the light might hit one of the tiny little simulated bumps and then it might bounce onto another one of those tiny little simulated bumps and then eventually reach your eye. So multi-scatter GGX will look a little bit brighter than GGX on rough materials. So multi-scatter is a bit more realistic because GGX only does one bounce. It can't go bouncing around the little bumps in the material. So if I changed the roughness up and then switch between the two, there's still really no difference. This seems to only affect metallic or transmission materials. So if I turn up the metallic slider and I had low roughness, very smooth material, not really gonna notice a difference. If I changed it up though, you'll see that multi-scatter is a little bit brighter, which is a little bit more accurate. And I guess this would be probably more white than bright red if it's a metal. And the same happens with transmission. If I turn on transmission, multi-scatter is just a little bit brighter, unless the roughness is low where they look pretty similar because the light can't bounce off it, it just goes directly back into your eye. So those are the situations where multi-scatter GGX improves the look a little bit. It's a tiny little bit slower, but in the cases where you have a rough metal or rough glass material, then it can be worth it. Okay, next we got alpha. Turn it down low enough, it's just gonna turn black. Now, if I go into cycles, if I turn it down, it becomes more transparent until it goes out. So you can have, say like a pattern, like a brick pat texture might be a pattern you might have. And if I plugged that into there, you can see that parts would be transparent and other parts won't be. So you can use this for materials like a leaf where you might have a plane with just a leaf texture with transparency. Or I could use this for like glass where it would be partially transparent. So partial transparency plus transmission, and you get something that looks like glass. Turn down the roughness. However, in Eevee, you gotta go into your options to be able to use this correctly. So go to your material options, which can also be found if you press N on the side here, options, and there's gonna be blend mode, opaque. Now there's different alpha options here too. So alpha blend, which blends it based on the alpha. Now it has problems with sorting different alpha parts. So you'll see that it's kind of getting confused between like which plane is on which side. So alpha hashed will look a bit more normal here. And alpha hashed is just kind of like a dithering effect where it has more or less dots of this color depending on your alpha. So similar to like an old video game where you would have different dithers to get a blending effect. And then we have our alpha clip, which says it's either fully transparent or not transparent at all, which would be again good for if we had a texture that had transparent parts and non-transparent parts like this brick we could use as an example. And there's also the shadow mode where you can have opaque, alpha clip, or alpha hashed. Next we got normal, which acts as the direction the surface is facing. So as you can see, if I go into like edit mode, I can enable these normals. So you can see these lines say 
what direction the surface is going in. But in your material, you can kind of just lie about that. So if I added like a normal here node, I can plug this normal vector into there and I can rotate and you can see that the entire thing ends up just being sort of shaded in one way because it's all sort of just facing one direction. And you can also use things like a bump node with a height map or a normal map node with a normal map. So say I got my bricks again, I can plug this factor into the height of this bump and plug the normal into here. It kind of simulates the surface being faced in a different direction. So it can give like the shadows and highlights that I would have based off of that. So you can get a more detailed mesh. Now if I smooth this out a little bit, it'll be a little bit more noticeable. So you can see based on the light and this height map, it can determine what way the surface should face. This doesn't affect the actual silhouette of the model, just the shading. Next, we've got the clear coat normal, which is the same as the normal, except for the clear coat layer. So if I have clear coat turned on, I can go add a bump node and a noise node to add imperfections to my clear coat. Uh, uh, plug the factor into the height here, plug the normal into the clear coat normal. And I can play it with a scale. Uh, I have transmission turned on. Play with the strength. And you can get effects kind of similar to like the orange peel effect that some clear coats have, where there's little bumps in the clear coat because it's not perfect. Yeah, something like this. Maybe you have like metal for car paint. And then there's tangent, which affects the anisotropic. So if I turn on anisotropic and go into cycles, I can go to geometry and then I can do like rotate vector, vector rotate. And I can plug the tangent into the vector here. And maybe I'll go with Euler because that's a little bit easier for me and I can plug that into the tangent and then I can rotate this and, and this gives you a little bit more control than an anisotropic rotation. So that's the principal BSDF node which allows you to create physically based shaders. If you like this video and would like to see more Blender videos like this, please like and subscribe and maybe leave a comment. Thanks for watching. See you later.